the live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's Ordinary Council meeting. I declare the meeting start to start at 5.30 p.m. You all have the council meeting agenda in front of you. Um, I'll start with item number one, acknowledgement. We, the Greater Shepparton City Council, begin today's meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, which now comprises Greater Shepparton. We pay respect to their tribal elders. We celebrate their continuing culture and we acknowledge the memory of their ancestors. Item number two is privacy notice. This public meeting is being streamed live via our Facebook page and made available for public access on our website, along with the official minutes of this meeting. Item number three, governance principles. Uh, this is an addition to our format, for, to the, the agenda format. So I'll read this one out for today. Council considers that the recommendations contained in this agenda give effect to the overarching governance principles stated in section 9.2 of the Local Government Act 2020. These principles are as follows. Number one, council decisions are to be made and actions taken in accordance with the relevant law. Number two, priority is to be given to achieving the best outcomes for the municipal community including future generations. Number three, the municipal community is to be engaged in strate strategic planning and strategic decision making. Number four, innovation and continuous improvement is to be pursued. Number five, collaboration with other councils and governments and statutory bodies is to be sought. Number six, the ongoing financial viability of the council is to be ensured. Number seven, regional, state, and national plans and policies are to be taken into account in strategic planning and decision making. And number eight, the transparency of council decisions, actions, and information is to be ensured. Moving on to page number seven, uh, item number four, apologies. Councillors, do we have an apology today? Councillor Les Oroswari. Yes, Denny Adam. Councillor Denny Adam. It's not working. Could you please unmute uh, yourself, Councillor Adam? I thought our governance team was doing that, but yes, I'd just like to uh, note the apology of Councillor Les Oroswari. Thank you. We go to the vote. Those in favor? Okay. Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Item number five is declarations of conflict of interest. Councillors, uh, is there any declaration of conflict of interest today with respect to the agenda items? Neil, thank you. We'll move on to item number six, confirmation of minutes of previous meetings. Is any item of the meeting uh, minutes um, needed, needs a discussion? If not, then there's a recommendation on page seven about the minutes of the meeting. Uh, could someone please move a motion? Councillor Kim okay. Could you please unmute? Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Yes, I'd like to move the recommendation that the minutes of the 16th of June 2020 Council meeting as circulated be confirmed. Thank you. And do we, do we have a seconder? Councillor Sutton? Councillor Sutton, you will have to unmute yourself and, and apologies. I, I think there's some, um, yeah, uh, our governor's team is not able to do it remotely. So please, you'll have to unmute yourself. Yes, I agree. I second that motion. Thank you very much. And 
Um, now we'll go to the vote. <laughs> Sorry, I'm disorganizing myself. Uh, those in favor? Motion carried and opposed. Thank you. Item seven is public question time. Mr. Harriet, do we have any no, public questions today? No, we do not. Have 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 okay. We'll now move on to page number eight of our agenda. 8.1, item 8.1 is about Greater Shepparton Best Start Early Years Plan 2020 to 2025. There's a recommendation on page eight. Would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd be more than happy to move this motion that the council one endorse the draft Shepherd, draft Greater Shepherd and Best Start Early Years Plan 2020-2025 for exhibition, and two place the plan on public exhibition for a period of four weeks, commencing 22nd of July 2020 and concluding 19th of August 2020 for final community consultation. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Do I have a second? Councillor O'Keefe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy, happy to sec second that recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this group does do amazing work and have done amazing work for many, many, many years now. Um, the environmental, social and economic impact is huge. And invest, as we all know, investment in early childhood is critical as it says in the report so we are a highly disadvantaged population in some areas and um, the way forward is to break the cycle of disadvantage through early childhood learning so that's backed by evidence and we're putting that in practice we've had some gains like an increase in breastfeeding and um, it better language skills moving forward with um, better kindergarten attendance and things like that um, healthy, happy, well-adjusted children generally become healthy, happy, well-adjusted adults. So that's what we want to see. Uh, best outcomes for the next generation because that will benefit everyone through every stage of life. Um, perhaps, perhaps we need more consideration of the diversity of family groups. Uh, we're still calling, calling one department the maternal child, child and health when that kind of excludes quite a fair bit of paternal and all the rest of it. So we might need to be a bit cautious of our language moving forward. But um, it's a terrific, terrific um, organisation what they do and also a good advocacy platform for a parent baby centre at GB Health because we have all the data, the statistics support, the fact that we need more help in this area to break that this cycle of disadvantage. And if we get it right, that can be applied over other muni municipalities. So I'm very much in support of this. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, look, it's great to think that we've got these works all put together and it has been a collaborative approach. There's been lots of other people involved in this as well as now going out to public consultation, which is extremely important for four weeks to get some feedback. But it's great to think we've had the best start early years, partnerships, specific work groups, service providers and extensive research. So it's a community effort. It'll be a moving beast. I think there's always things that do, you know, improve along the way. But it's great, you know, it's a very, very important space and it's something that council obviously needs to do to be invested and involved in, and we are. And it's, uh, yeah, they're the most important years, I believe, of, it, of a child's you know, development. So great to have this, it's great work, and um, well done to everyone that's actually been involved in putting this one together. Thank you, Councillor Keith. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Councillor Sutton? Is that unmuted? Yes. Yep. Just a few okay. words. I just want to acknowledge the team behind the Best Start Early Years because I know how much work they do and they really need to be congratulated on what they've achieved over the past few years. The um, maternal and child health uh, birth to six years, they've increased home visits, they've increased lots of different areas in there in that space. So I think they have done a wonderful job and they'll continue to do that and this plan will just keep going for another six years and hopefully we'll get better outcomes um, over that time. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Uh, councillor Patterson? I to support the other councillors and what they've said, they're spot on. Um, 
Thank you. Um, they're spot on what they're saying. The uh, research is showing that uh, the first two years is so incredibly important to a child's development. And that's what this is concentrating on. And it is important that we continue to put resources into it, um, which I'm sure council will continue to do. As I said, uh, support the other councils are saying and research is, is, um, is showing this is exactly what we've got to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pedersen. Would any other councillor like to speak to the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Okay, motion carried on opposed. Next is uh, item number 9.1 on page 14, governance rules and public transparency policy. There's a recommendation on page 14. Would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Hazelman. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, I think it's appropriate that uh, I read the entire motion. Those that people who um, might be watching at home will wonder what on earth we're talking about if I don't. Um, I will move that the council, one, receives the draft governance rules, including the incorporated election period policy developed under section 60 of the Local Government Act 2020. Two, receives the draft public transparency policy developed under section 58 of the Local Government Act 2020. Three, in accordance with section 60-4 of the Local Government Act 2020, endorses the following processes of community engagement with respect to the development of the draft governance rules and draft public transparency policy. 3.1, publication of a notice on council's website and social media sites, which invites submissions from members of the public in respect of the draft governance rules and draft public transparency policy within 14 days from the date of publication of the notice. 3.2, give consideration of all submissions received. Four, authorizes the chief executive officer to take such steps as are necessary to give effect to this resolution. And five, considers the adoption of the governance rules and public transparency policy at the 18th of August, 2020 council meeting. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Do I have a second? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Hazelman, would you like to speak to the motion? Only, only a few words, Madam Mayor, because effectively um, we're putting um, a couple of documents out for public consultation and the, the time to debate the pros and cons of this is at the August Council meeting. But the reason why we are putting it out and have developed these documents is that it's a requirement under the Local Government Act 2020 uh, to implement a suite of new documents by the 1st of September 2020 two of which are these documents that we're putting out for public consultation. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Councillor um, Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Very briefly, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to add to Councillor Hazelman's uh, commentary there, just quickly again, for the benefit of the, if there is any viewing public out there, that uh, the governance rules, uh, Section 60 of Local Government Act 2020 provides for councils to adopt and apply governance rules that consist of the following. And these five or six categories are what? will no doubt have some minor changes potentially, and they are, and they're very, very important. The conduct of meetings of council and delegated committees, the form and availability of meeting records, the election of the mayor and deputy mayor, the appointment of an acting mayor, the election period policy, the procedure for the disclosure of, of a conflict of interest by a councillor or delegated committee member, and the disclosure of a conflict of interest by a member of council staff when providing advice to councils. So these are some of the... Uh, sections of uh, of this new governance rules that will be potentially tinkered with. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Summer? In the interest of expediency and process, in fact, we have to do this by September, I will support it. There's a few items in this agenda that don't have my full support. We've gone through them with a fine tooth comb and ironing out a few things and getting there. But um, this is just a draft it's going out for public consultation. There's still room for discussion and we can address that at the next meeting. So I'll support it. Thank you. Yeah, that's right, Councillor Summer. Um, so would any other councillor like to speak to the motion? No? 
Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Next is item number 9.2 on page 18, local law number two, conduct at meetings and common C. There's a recommendation on page 18. Will the councillor please move a motion? Councillor O'Keefe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to move that recommendation as a motion on page 18, the local law number two, conduct at meetings and common seal. Again, um, I will read it out. We do have people listening that haven't got an agenda in front of them. It's quite long. Uh, the recommendation is that the council, number one, receives the proposed local law number two, conduct at meetings and common seal proposed local law. Number two gives notice in accordance with sections 119 one and 223 of the Local Government Act 1989 in the Victorian Government Gazette and in newspapers circulating generally in Council's Municipal District. 2.1 stating the, the purpose and general purport of the proposed local law. 2.2 stating that a copy of the proposed local law can be obtained from Council's website and from Council's offices. And 2.3 inviting submissions in accordance with section 223 of the Local Government Act 1989 within 28 days from the date of publication of the notice and 2.4 stating that a person making a submission is entitled to request to be heard in support of their submission. Item three considers all submissions and hears from any submitters wishing to be heard at a future council meeting. Number four authorises the Chief Executive Officer to take such steps as are necessary to give effect to this resolution. And finally, number five, consider making the proposed local law at the 15th of September 2020 Council meeting. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Do I have a second? Councillor Sutton? I'm happy to accept that, um, that motion or that recommendation as a motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor O'Keefe? Do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Very similar to the previous uh, recommendation and previous motion. Um, it's in accordance with the new requirements um, under the Local Government Act 2020. The Council is required to adopt uh, a new set of governance rules by September 1st, 2020. Um, the proposal local law has been presented, as we said, in draft format for public consultation for a period of 28 days. So um, in accordance with Section 223 of the Local Government Act, um, we certainly look forward to any feedback that we might have on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just to say that um, anybody in the public who is interested in it, they could give in submissions and we can have a look at those and come back to the next meeting with this. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Now, do, would any councillor like to speak uh, against the motion? No, would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Summer? Thank you. Similar to the last one, there are a few things that I've not 100% sold on on this one and the next one, but uh, we're still having discussions. Um, I think it's a bit of a shame we're doing this right at the end of the council term because this should be a discussion that involves all the new councillors going into the next council term. This is where they have an opportunity to get some more control back from the organisation, um, lead a bit stronger, put some things in place that aren't quite as restrictive, but um, it is what it is. Uh, so one example of something I'm not 100% sold on would be the definition. Um, there seems to be a bit of confusion around when a motion is a motion. Notice of motions, um, when you put them up, apparently it's an official note. It's an official mo motion, even though it hasn't got a mover and a seconder, which I find quite strange because it's not a motion until it's moved and it should be treated like we treat any recommendation and have the opportunity for a word to be changed here and there so long as the intent of the recommendation or the notice of motion remains the same. But for some reason, we've made that quite prescriptive and this is an opportunity to loosen that a little because it does seem um, unnecessary because uh, we'd have to get a mover and a seconder to make an amendment to whether something should say and or or, which to me makes no sense. But, um, you know, in the interest of transparency, we can have these discussions through the draft stage. People can make submissions. We'll continue with our email debates and hopefully get a version that everybody's um, content with to a degree. But 
that's democracy. So I'll support it for the interest of debate. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Um, Mr. Harry, would you like to clarify about the timeline Councillor Summer has identified uh, that it would be it would have been preferred to have it in for the next uh, term rather than I thought there was some uh, only in relation to the uh, provisions the, of the new uh, act, of the new uh, act which yes. we need to comply with, so. and it's by September. Yep. So, Councillor Summer, the reason that we are doing it now is because uh, we have to comply uh, with the timeline that has been set, and it has to be I in September. Understand that. That was not in question. It's just a shame that it has to be this way. Hmm. Of trying to the okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, would any councillor like to speak for the motion? No. So we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. All right, so next is item 9.3, instrument of delegation, members of staff and development hearings panel. Uh, there's a recommendation on page 21. Would a councillor like to um, move a motion? Councillor Summer. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Did you want me to read it out? Do you? Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's an instrument of delegation. I, I'll move it as written on page uh, 21. Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second that uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we seem to be doing a lot of these recently, and I'm hoping that this version will offer some stability so we don't have to keep going back and, and doing more of these. It's basically just council can't operate unless we delegate to the CEO. So the CEO then has to delegate to the rest of the staff because obviously if we did everything, we'd be in meetings from dusk till dawn every single day. So the only way it can function is by having this document, and it's quite substantial. It does um, put that question mark around operational versus strategic systems within the council. Uh, we're often told that we shouldn't be involved in operational procedures, but uh, the fact is that this document does require a council of resolution. And that indicates that the lines are probably a bit more blurred than we take for granted. Uh, what um, happens operationally we still have liability for as councillors and there's nothing in the act that says that we can't be involved in operations yes that's the ceo's primary purpose but that doesn't exclude us from doing these things so um yeah look it's something we have to do it's a bit of housekeeping uh, again but uh hopefully this will be the last document for a while thank you Sorry, Madam Mayor, were you, were you asking me to speak? Madam Mayor? Hello, can you hear me? I can't hear anyone, sorry. Madam Mayor, if you hear me, please raise your hand so I can begin speaking. There you go, thank you. I just want to add quickly to Councillor uh, Summers' comments. This is basically a procedural motion that needs to be done, but to see you a little bit of context, um, <clears throat> the instrument of delegation to members of staff and development hearings panel was at last adopted uh, by this council on 21st of April, 2020. So this additional review has been prompted by an internal restructure within the community directorate whereby position titles have changed and been amended. So this update to the instrument of delegation is essential to ensure these officers continue to be authorized with the appropriate powers, duties and functions to perform their roles effectively. That's straight out of the executive summary, but just to make it clear to everyone why this is happening. I hope you heard that because I can't hear anything coming back to me. Thank you. Yes, we heard you and thank oh, you for you your go. comments. Now, <laughs> thank you for your comments. All right, so would any councillor like to speak uh, against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, we'll now go to the vote. Those in, those in favour? 
motion carried on opposed next is item 9.4 on page 25 contracts awarded under delegation report there's a recommendation on page 25 would any councillor uh, like to move a motion councillor Giovinetti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the recommendation on page 25 motion that the council note contracts awarded under delegated authority by the CEO and requests for tenders advertised but not yet awarded. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Sutton? I'm happy to move that, mo that second that motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Sutton. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, again, as I've said on many occasions in the past, uh, I think it's, uh, it's important that um, members of the uh, public are, are advised as to what uh, some of the works that are going on around the municipality are. This is something the CEO does. Uh, he doesn't have to uh, advise everybody because it is under his uh, delegated powers, but he does it uh, every month. And uh, this month we can see that we've got a uh, contract awarded to Mandalay Technologies for the provision of waste operations software. And um, also a contract awarded to Mawson's Construction for the, uh, for the construction of the Katanja West Basin Station upgrade. And there's probably another half a dozen or more uh, requests for tenders that are currently out and uh, waiting completion. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to note, um, obviously, we do have some tendering out at the moment that um, you know possibly will be impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic that we're facing at the moment. Obviously, the um, event management of Fryer Street Food Festival. There'll be some, you know, some obviously some changes along the way, but obviously, council still supports you know economic development within our community. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how what we can achieve and what we need to obviously, you know, change and moving forward. What that means, we all don't know yet, but um, obviously, there's some things in there that um, may not be going ahead. Um, one thing I'm very pleased about is obviously the detailed as Park Pavilion. That'll be something that um, will be very, very exciting for the community. And there's some other projects in there. Maybe um, as we talked about the pool, getting that retail, keeping our facilities um, of high standards, very important, particularly our ones that are you know, physical, people using physical activity and swimming and outdoor exercising, all those type of things. So um, obviously there's a cost to that, um, but yeah, very important that we continue to do so. Thank you, Councillor Keith. Uh, would any councillor like to speak to the motion? I think I saw some hands before. Yeah, Councillor Summer. Just in support of what Councillor O'Keefe was just saying about the COVID changes, perhaps it would be prudent to have some kind of subtext underneath anything that might be impacted by COVID just to give us an explanation on how that's going to proceed. Briar Street Food Festival being one. It's a shame that we probably would be quite irresponsible to go ahead with something like that. So what's going to happen? And these things take time. They've probably been in the pipeline a long time and it's gone through the process. It's ended up in the agenda. But as we know, things change every day. So it'd be nice to have a little bit of subtext around them. Would you like to add some add comments some now? clarification yeah, around sure. that, Madam Mayor. Yeah, um, sure. The uh, Friar Street uh, contract does actually have provision for COVID-19, uh, three-year contract uh, and the initial uh, year at least. Uh, there's plenty of uh, warning or commentary there about the restrictions that may be in place uh, for the next six to 12 months. So uh, those items and matters are built into the relevant contracts. Adamant. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Summer. Uh, would any councillor like to speak to the motion? All right, so in that case, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Okay. 
With that, we now move on to our next um, agenda item 9.5, procurement policy review. There's a recommendation on page 28. Would a councillor please move a motion? Councillor Patterson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move the council adopt version 6 of procurement policy 13, policy one, PL1. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Patterson, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, just, just quickly, thank you, Madam Mayor. This is our uh, procurement policy. It needs to be updated every 12 months. It's been assessed and decided that it's correct the one we've got. So we'll um, ticking that off has been assessed again. So we can move on. Thank you. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, just to quickly add to Councillor Patterson's commentary, which is correct, uh, we will be changing this though, I think by July 2021. Uh, the current one will still exist until that point. I think by the end of 2012, 2021, we will be adopting another one, a new one, a new version. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Giovanetti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I am in favour of this, mo this motion because we obviously do have to have a procurement policy. But I'm, I've got to say that uh, during my time on council, I have been critical of the limitations of our procurement policies. I often wonder if we're getting the best bang for our buck. I know as councillors, we express frustrations on occasions that we only have two or three tenders for some of our advertised contracts, which are often amount to some very large dollars involved. Often the reason being is that the process to register as, council ten as a council tenderer is difficult for many smaller to medium-sized businesses to complete. When I stood for council initially, I wanted to cut the red tape at council. Early on, I thought we'd achieve good outcomes with the uh, planning application timeframes that were reduced. But the longer I'm on council, the more red tape is being introduced. Now, this is not the fault of the officers. Uh, as much of it is directed from the state government, often divesting themselves of their responsibilities on the council with no additional recompense to offset the costs. I often wonder if we're all not over legislating ourselves to ensure we don't cop a kicking from one direction or another. Uh, I've worked with state and federal governments for 40 years now and I have to say that I've never seen the level of bureaucracy that local government has in working with any of those other government departments. But as I say, I support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Uh, would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Okay, now uh, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Moving on to item number 9.6, temporary extension of terms of Shepherd and Show Me committee members. Uh, there's a recommendation on page 31. Would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to move the recommendation as a motion on page 31 that the council approve the extension to the term of the following Shepherd and Show Me industry representatives until the 30th of September 2020. That includes Shane Saley, John Mangtagna, and Stephen Snyder. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Adam? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I second that motion. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, look, there's some changes within the Local Government Act as of September the 1st, 2020. Section 86 committees of council, such as Shepherd and Show Me, will no longer exist in their current format. In light of this, the purpose, structure and governance of Shepherd and Show Me, including the committee, is required to be reviewed. So it is anticipated that the transition to any new format needs to be, uh, sorry, needs to commence on the 1st of August 2020. So it's just bringing them up to that transition period and time to fill the gap until we see what that means with the new changes within the committees. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Um, Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? 
Could you please unmute yourself? Yes, I was. I was <laughs> okay, thank you. Warming up my mouth, thank you, Melanie. <laughs> thank Thanks. you. Uh, but no, just to add to Councillor uh, O'Keefe's comments here, look, it doesn't make practical sense to uh, go through a process of um, uh, putting new members on that committee when, in fact, as Councillor O'Keefe said, the whole structure will change in August anyway. So it's just a practical uh, response to that change. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, now we'll now go to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Motion carried and opposed. Thank you. Next is item 10.1. Shepherd and Show Grounds Advisory Committee, Terms of Reference. There's a recommendation on page 33. Would uh, Councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Hazelman? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move that the Council adopt the Terms of Reference for the Shepherd and Show Grounds Advisory Committee. Thank you. And uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Patterson. I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Hazelman, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you. It's very, very straightforward. There's a requirement that the, uh, the terms of reference for the committee are reviewed every two years. That's been undertaken. No changes to the document has resulted. So it's uh, very much business as usual. Thank you. Councillor Patterson, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, Councillor Hazelman nailed it in one. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Councillor Hazelman, I didn't see your hands. Are you in favour? Yeah. Thank you. Motion carried unopposed. Item 10.2 on page 36, Tatura Park Advisory Committee, Terms of Reference. There is a recommendation on page 36. Would a councillor please move a motion? Thank you, Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, would like to move the recommendation as a motion that the council adopt the terms of reference for the Tatura Park Advisory Committee. Thank you. And a seconder? Councillor Summer? Thank you, Madam Mayor, I'll second the motion. Thanks. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? You're on mute, Councillor Adam. Sorry, Councillor, sorry, Madam Mayor. Yeah, look, the terms of reference haven't changed since the previous review, so that will remain the same. Um, just as a reminder uh, to the public and to the councils, the role of this committee is to provide feedback and advice for future planning and capital works and represent the feedback and interests of the user groups. The committee shall hold at least four meetings at the Tatura Park complex during the year on such dates determined by the committee. Um, and that's basically business as usual, Madam Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it was probably a bit remiss of me for the last motion as well. Um, Congratulations to the committee, because I do sit on both those committees. Um, they're a great group of people. They're, um, they should be very proud in what they've achieved in maintaining and um, uh, restoring. It's a very competitive regional facility out at Tap Park, as we all know it's referred to as the jewel of the crown in Tatura. They're a passionate group, great intentions. They're great, good to deal with. They've got attention to detail and um, good safety foresight. So, um, yeah, I'm really impressed with them. Recently renaming the outdoor arena to the Kevin Gunner Ryan Arena. That was an initiative of the TAP group. So um, long-standing councillor Gunner Ryan, who had been a councillor since he was 24, I think. Um, yeah, you're probably sick of me telling that story, but I do think it's pretty amazing. And um, obviously so does Tatura. So I'm more than happy to support the terms of reference that, yeah, we, we need volunteers. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Councillor Summer. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? 
Okay, for the motion. Councillor Pedersen. Mm -hmm. You're on mute, Councillor Pedersen, please. Yes, that's that's better. I'd just like to correct Councillor Summer. Um, if we don't, we'll all be in trouble that um, Councillor Kevin gunner said has AO in the wording too. If we don't put that in, we'll be in really big trouble. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Um, would any councillor like to speak to the motion? All right, now we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Okay, motion carried unopposed. Next is our item number 10.3, single use plastic free council run events policy 2020. There's a recommendation on page 39. Would a councillor please move a motion? Councillor Giovanetti. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move the recommendation on page uh, 39. Uh, that states that the council will adopt the single use plastic free council run events policy. Thank you. And do I have a seconder? Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to second that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. I, I did have quite a few things I was going to say on this particular item, but I, um, I will taper it down somewhat. Um, but this motion, in, in my opinion, is, is a very important one, as we as a council need to set the example for our community to follow when it comes to single-use plastic items. When I walk around Shepparton, it staggers me the amount of single-use disposal products that are just dumped out of car windows by some of our regular celebrities here in Shepparton. The number of our fast food wrappers, containers and plastic bottles left on the roadside, it really is a disgrace. Uh, it's almost impossible to catch the culprit. So as wherever we can, where we can reduce the use of single use items, I think it is mandatory. I was all, always, uh, sorry, I was going to add something along the lines that uh, I hope we never ban condoms for these people because uh, we don't need them to breed more than they have to, but that would be offensive to some people and I would never say that. Okay, is that all, Councillor Giovanetti? Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I lost a bit of concentration there, but I'll get back on track. Um, this is a very responsible um, thing we need to be doing, a very responsible policy. We certainly, everyone knows the impact of plastics on our environment. So I think, you know, this is a great thing that we need to do. Our events, you know, prior COVID and post recovery of COVID are growing every single year. You know, Council is running an incredible amount of community events. And out of those events, we encourage water. We encourage lots of things at those events. So, you know, I think we certainly are taking a very strong you know, lead and responsibility for the things that we are involved in and also promoting community to feel the same way about it. So it's a strong message. Um, it's great to think that we also um, followed the lead of another um, council that also had put, put this in place. I'm just trying to find exactly which one it was here, but they'd already had this in place and it's helped us set up this a lot better. So well done. And I think it's something that across the community, these conversations need to continue. We know the impact. We know that plastics don't go away. They literally just stay around for hundreds of years and just take up space. So, you know, it's a great policy and something that we all continue to learn from and um, hopefully educate the community on as well. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak to the motion, for the motion? Councillor Adam? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just to be clear, so again, the viewing public understand what this policy has in its content. Uh, it uh, <clears throat> outlines Council's commitment to eliminate single-use plastics, plastic bags, eliminate single-use plastic plates, bowls, cups, straws, cutlery and takeaway food containers, reduce bottled water and provide alternative free access to water, avoid plastic packaging, eliminate balloons at events, reuse event materials where possible and educate and guide event staff and audience on single-use plastic free practices. So it's a practical policy there's definite actions there that people would be directed towards uh, doing. And uh, I think if everyone follows those rules, we'll go a long way to reducing the, the plastic menace that's out there in our community. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? 
Yes, Councillor Patterson. Yes, I'd like to support what most of the councillors have said, or pretty well all of what the councillors said. Um, there's, we should be just reminded that this is a council run events only at this stage. Uh, it is not you know, widespread across the community. Um, hopefully one day it might be. Um, the only concern I have about the whole uh, list of items, which is all plastics, is water. Um, I think it's, very, it's imperative that we have water available at events, which we are allowing for. How it happens, I'm not sure. I just think we might have to you know, give it 12 months to just see if the water side is working correctly. Um, because it's very important. In our events we have during hot summer days, that people get as much water to drink as they want to. And uh, if it, we're going to restrict it because of this, I don't think it's the only way to go. But um, we certainly give it 12 months and see how it's going. Okay, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Any other comments? Yes, Councillor Summer. Yeah, um, it's a green policy, but even if you don't believe in climate change, I think we can all agree that less pollution is a good thing. So plastics are made to last forever, as Councillor O'Keefe said, uh, they don't go away. And we need to be more aware of where these things might end up in wild animals and in our waterways, clogging our drains, rah, rah, rah. Uh, we have such a disposable culture these days, we just don't think about where it goes when it after it hits the bin or gets chucked in a river. So that needs to change. So if we're more careful from the top, hopefully that will filter down in terms of culture to the grassroots and people will follow our example. Now they've said that it's a cost neutral type of um, implementation, which I find amazing because I always thought that alternatives to plastics were quite dear, but apparently not biodegradable is on pass in sustainability and in financial impact. So it's a no-brainer about whether or not we should do it. So, yes. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Um, all right, does anyone else want to speak to the motion? Okay, so we now go to the vote. Those in favor? Okay. Motion carried on opposed. All right, item 10.4, Asia Fruit Logistica 2020 and International Relations. Uh, there's a recommendation on page 43. Would any councillor like to move a motion? Councillor O'Keefe. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to make the recommendation that the council, number one, note the Greater Shepherd and City Council will not attend Asia Fruit Logistica in 2020. And note that officers will continue to focus on business growth through access to international markets. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Councillor Patterson, thank you. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Thanks. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Madam Mayor, I think I've been yeah. unmuted instead oh, thank of... You. No, it's working. Yeah, just right. Thank you. Look, this is obviously a direct impact from COVID-19. We don't have a choice here. It's obviously, you know, we can't do that this year. But what we can do is still continue to keep those relationships and those opportunities strong. We've built a lot of effort and a lot of success over the last few trips, particularly our you know, international delegations to China, Hong Kong, Jakarta. Myself being on those delegations the past two years, there's certainly success in place. So it's very important as part of our Greater Shepherd and International Engagement Strategy that we continue to you know, build on those relationships and opportunities for the Greater Shepherd and region. It is disappointing, you know, it's such a, it's such a great opportunity when we're over there, you know, to, particularly when we went to the Asia Fruit Logistica, um, big expo there last year and the year before, you know, to really be there lobbying, you know, with our local growers and our local businesses. It was such a great experience, but also a great opportunity. But those opportunities, as I said, have created fantastic relationships continue of business developing and building and connections. So it's certainly not lost. We'll certainly continue to work very, very hard in this space and support our local industries as much as we can. That's why we go. It's why we, we all head off together. We're very proud when we're there. We're very supportive of what we do. And we know we have the best fruit and best produce in the world. So there's definitely still going to be many opportunities for us. It's, it's, it's just a different way of doing things as we will many things, you know, COVID-19. It's changed things, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't stop us from, you know, progressing and still, you know, doing the great things that we do. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Councillor O'Keefe. Councillor Patterson. Uh, yes, it is a shame. It's uh, a lot of momentum has been built up over the previous few years. And um, if you speak to some of the orchards that have attended, they can certainly see a great future. And we've um, been concentrating on Asia for quite a few years. And um, the momentum's there. And it's a shame we can't continue on, but we just cannot do it. But what has um, sometimes things happen in funny ways. And the old mother country has left the European market, which has op potentially opened up new markets for our old produce. Um, so it'll be interesting with the officers. I know they're, you know they're right on the ball there and they're, they're making contact with them and one market might close for one reason, another one might open. So um, totally confident with our staff that they'll be, they'll be looking at all the options available, which is great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peterson. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Does anyone want to speak um, for the motion? Councillor Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, speaking to the motion means that we obviously support that Greater Shepparton will not be attending the Asia Fruit Logistica, but that's for the obvious reason that, that have been outlined by Councillor um, O'Keefe, sorry, and Councillor Patterson. Uh, but uh, obviously, uh, the point two says the officers will continue to focus on business growth through access to international markets. And yes, there will be some other uh, markets opening up. But that doesn't mean the Asia market is closing down. That's actually more important than ever that we still focus and concentrate on that region because of the fact there's uh, hundreds and hundreds of millions of potential clients there. Um, the English market, well, yeah, that door may open indeed. A uh, market of potentially 60 odd million people, that should not be um, sniffed at, I suppose. That's got to be. Uh, um, uh, chase to a degree as well, but I think you'll find they'll be coming to us uh, sooner than we'll be coming to them in respect to that. But uh, that's a good thing as well. I, I think opportunities abound everywhere. We've got to keep the international engagement at front of mind and keep pursuing it on all fronts, whether that be Asia or Europe or, or the Middle East or anywhere for that matter. So I fully support our continued work in that field. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? No? All right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Okay, moving on to our next agenda item number 10.5 on page 48, adoption of Tulamba Growth Plan 2020. Um, there's a recommendation on page 48. Would a councillor please move a motion? Councillor Giovanetti. Yes, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to move the recommendation on page 48, which states that the Council, one, adopt the Talamba Growth Plan 2020 and the Talamba Streetscape and Housing uh, Typologies 2020. Two, receive and note the draft Talamba Growth Plan Conservation Report 2020. And three, authorise the preparation and exhibition of a planning scheme amendment to implement the Talamba Growth Plan 2020 and the Talamba Streetscape and Housing Topologies 2020 into the Greater Shepparton and Planning Scheme. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a second? Councillor Patterson? I'll second that motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. As we all know, Talamba is a beautiful little town on the west of the Goulburn River, um, has a great population. Uh, people there tend to get a lot of things done because they're very active in and have a great community spirit. Um, I urge the residents of Talamba to have a look at the documents that are going to be exhibited and have their say. Uh, some, some residents in Talamba, I'm sure, would like to uh, have the little village settlement remain as is. Uh, others uh, are more uh, likely to uh, approve um, greater development, which in turn would probably lead to things like sewerage coming into the town. Now, I think it's important that all of those um, members of the Talamba community have their say um, so that we as a council can uh, take their opinions into consideration. Okay, thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Patterson? Uh, yes, can you, 
correct. It, it, I find it very interesting. I have found it very interesting having conversations with lots of residents from Palamba. Um, some certainly want to retain the village feel and some wanted their town to expand so they can have sewerage and a better, bigger school, not a better school, bigger school, et cetera, and so their town grow. And I understand completely both aspects of it. I also understand that when I, uh, I we sold our building in Merutna, we looked at Palamba. There was nothing available at all. So, you know, if you want the opportunity to expand, there has to be land there, and this provides land for an extra 30 years for several developments. So it'll be a very big development that goes over the next few years. Um, but I, I really do believe that it'll have that village feel still. Um, it's unique that it has, you know, not what a lot of little towns don't have now. It's a pub and it'll have a very good um, highway access, whether it's an asset or not, I think it will be. Um, so, um, you know, I urge the residents to have a look and, and make sure they're happy with what is up there, um, both street plans and the development itself, and um, yeah, get back to us. It'll be interesting to see the outcome. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Okay, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Okay, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Right, so we'll now go to next item, which is on page 55, 10 point, item number 10.5, adoption of Shepparton and Marupna 2050 Regional City Growth Plan. Would any councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Sutton? I'd like to move a motion to lay this on the table, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. Motion has been moved and seconded. Yeah, first we have to move and second. Yeah. Okay, uh, Councillor Sutton, my understanding is that we have to first go through the process of moving and seconding this motion, and then we, uh, then there'll be a second stage about um, the matter that you have raised. So uh, in this regard, I would like to ask any councillor uh, to move a motion. Councillor Giovanetti. I'd like to move the motion to lay it on the table. All right, I'll uh, pause for, for a couple of minutes just to get clarification around this proce process. So, Madam Mayor. Oh, okay. 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 okay, Councillor Sutton and, and, for, um, and, and to everyone else also, uh, we have just clarified that according to local law number two, procedures for council meetings and common seal 2018, uh, section 74, laying a motion on the table, it requires a motion to be moved and seconded, and, um, but not put to vote. And at that time, uh, Councillor Sutton if, you, Sutton, if you want, you can raise that uh, matter that you have just raised. So I'll go back to the uh, formal steps. I'm asking for a councillor to move a motion with respect to item number 10.6. So are you saying I can't move the motion to lay it on the table? You, you can, but first that motion has to be moved and then seconded. And while we are debating, then 
and before the vote is done, then at, at any point in uh, during that debate, you can uh, you can uh, propose to lay this motion on the table. But the motion has to be moved and seconded first, as per my understanding, and my governance team is also agreeing to that. So we'll go back to the uh, to the uh, process first. Um, Councilor Giovanetti, am I right to understand that you want to move that motion? Yeah, Madam Mayor, for the purposes of taking this matter further, I'm happy to move the recommendation on page 55 that Council receive and note the Shepparton and Maroopna 2050 Regional City Growth Plan Community Engagement Summary Report and from January 2020 to receive and note the Shepparton and Maroopna 2050 Regional City Growth Plan Background Report from July 2020. Three, adopt the Shepparton and Maroopna 2050 Regional City Growth Plan and four, note that council officers will begin preparing a planning scheme amendment to implement the Shepparton and Maroopna 2050 Regional City Growth Plan into the Greater Shepparton Planning Scheme. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Patterson? Oh, second, second, it, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor Giovanetti, you're on mute. Yeah. Thank you. This document has been prepared in consultation with staff and uh, the Victorian Planning Authority. It's quite a detailed report indicating the areas of uh, residential growth and industrial growth for or up to the period 2050. Uh, it's probably not, it's probably pointless me going on much further if there's going to be another motion to uh, lay this particular motion on the table. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Patterson, do you want to speak to the motion? No, just that I, I you know, have trouble understanding how we can get this 11th hour and then uh, all these questions come up. You know, we've had months in this. It's been going on for years, this piece of literature. It's the most important document that we'll cover in our council term. It's a whole future. You know, I, I do support that if some councils aren't happy with all the knowledge, I'm happy to have it left on the table. So I'll, I'll just second it and we'll go from there. Okay, thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? We are now debating and yes, councillor Summer. Uh, yes, I'm happy with points one and two of that motion, but um, I don't think it was necessary to move points three and four because there have been some changes. Councillor Patterson is entirely right. This has been going on for a long time and it generally is the 11th hour when things do come to our attention. We didn't know about the super school until very recently and now we have a super school. So Councilor all this Summer, very... can we please stick to the uh, item uh, that is that we're discussing, which is item 10.6. 10.6 adoption of the Maroopna yeah. Urban and Regional Growth Plan. Yeah. Right. Well, I find that relevant because um, the future land east of Doyle's Road um, apparently could potentially be rezoned into something different. Now, whether that's going to happen or not, whether there's a perfectly reasonable explanation of um, the processes that have got us to this point, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. We'll, we'll talk that through if this does get left on the table. But when ratepayers contact us specifically because they have concerns and it's a document, let's be honest, we're not adopting this in September 2020. It's a long-term document and a, and a month or two isn't going to make a big big difference. So um, I am against adopting it as it stands without further, further co comment. Okay, thank you, Councillor Summer. Okay. Would any councillor like to speak for the motion or any other? Yes, Councillor Adam? Well, Madam Mayor, to save some time, I'd like to move that we lay this matter on the table. Okay, thank you. So we'll now... Um... And Madam Mayor, um, may I ask for a point of clarification before you put the vote? Yeah, sure. Okay. Can, I, can I ask uh, Councillor Adam um, what additional information you need out of the organisation over the next uh, period to assist you in this uh, debate because um, you would appreciate there's a number of uh, developers, consultancy, businesses, agricultural enterprises that are ready to go and uh, need some uh, clarification and this document provides that. So I just need to know uh, what uh, additional information you require. Uh, uh, comes, um, Mr. Peter Harriet, um, I'll just um, request you to um 
pause here because now that the motion has been, um, they, uh, we do not need, we cannot make any further discussion because the motion has been uh, asked yeah, it hasn't on the been table. Put. No, but what's, what's the motion? The motion must not, 75.3 says the motion must not be further discussed or voted on until council resolves to take the motion from well, the Well, the motion's table. only been put, so I, only, I didn't uh, have any chance prior to that, you know. The motion further discussed and voted on until That's effectively after the vote's been taken so that you can't uh, deal with it uh, until it's brought back. Okay, so you're, use, you're using this um, this um, uh, opportunity before the vote. Well, it's just because it's such to a... To ask for this clarification? It's such a significant document, as Councillor Patterson said. I, I need clarification as to what the councillors uh, need. Now, if we're... I, I did hear comments that we were going to have further discussion with some parties. You would appreciate that if we're going back to some parties, uh, there's a number of people that have had input into this document uh, that which we would have to have fair um, fair consultation with as well. So I'm just uh, needing clarification so that we can progress this significant document as soon as possible. I think... Uh, Councillor Adam, you are on mute. Do you want to unmute? Oh, sorry, Madam Mayor. Can I now speak, Madam Mayor? Yes, okay. you may. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, that commentary, Mr. Harriet. Now, as Councillor Patterson referred to earlier, this is a very important document. This will um, virtually uh, mark what Shepparton looks like over the next 50 years or so. Uh, it's extremely important. And I know myself personally and a few other councillors even though some of this information has been out for quite a while, I say some of the information because really up until three or four weeks ago, my concerns or my um, focus was on the 2030 plan, which contradicts the 2050 plan for some particular areas of development completely, completely contradicts it. And that may be due to changing, uh, uh, changing environment. I understand that, understand that fully. However, we must be fully uh, knowledge, knowledgeable about what this contains in its entirety, because what we vote on now over the next, whether it's tonight or in one month's time, will determine how this place looks. Shepparton, traditionally, for whatever reason, is it's a bit like following the Nile River. We go north and south and stick to the highway. Now, uh, present uh, during briefings over the past month or so, we've we'll been, been told by different organisations and consultants that land to the east of uh, Shepparton, especially land directly opposite uh, east of Doyle's Lane or Doyle's Road, sorry, is prime agricultural land. And yes, it is, there's no doubt about that. But it's no different to land uh, north or south or even in the Lemnos area where um, it's been, there's, there's already um, obviously a uh, development there uh, concerning um, not houses, obviously, but a, a bit of a development out there. That land out there is no more, no less uh, arable than the land that we're talking about opposite uh, Dawes Road. Yet all the services that connect and that assist developments are right there, sewage, gas, and so on. So I don't think enough consideration has been given to, to that particular area. I think we need more time to really look at what the model means and the, uh, the consequences of not moving in that general area. I could go on for minutes, but I don't have the time tonight okay. to talk about Dobson Estate and all the rest of it and making a nice formal sort of area in that region. So I just think we need more time to consider the options and all the alternatives and the net benefit for the community. Okay, Councillor Adam, uh, we'll now go to the vote about laying uh, a motion on the table. Um, points of clarification. Oops. Sorry, Councillor Summer, do you want to say something? I would, just to clarify, my comment about the super school was that it was out near Doyle's Road. So it's perfectly relevant in terms of the conversation. So whether that should be agriculturally zoned or residentially zoned, that could impact the decision. And I'm not sure we've considered that. That's why I mentioned it. It was definitely in, in the relevant zone of, of the regional plan. 
All right, thank you for clarifying this, Councillor Summer. I'll go back to that uh, um, uh, the uh, that motion that uh, Councillor Adam is uh, saying that we lay on the table. So we'll, I'll start from that point. Councillor O'Keefe, do you want to say something? Yes, you haven't quite finished asking would anyone else like to speak to the motion and I'd like to speak to it if that's okay. Actually, there is no, no, according to the procedure that, according to the procedure that I understand, there is no uh, debate on this. We are just going straight to the vote for laying a motion on the table. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll continue with that. Uh, all those in favor of laying a motion on the table, on, uh, for laying this motion on the table. Okay. So motion. Um, so we have four. So that means that motion is. Um, those against. Is against. Is, is, um, those against. Sorry. Those against. Oh, we have to ask. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for <laughs> um, for clarifying. I'll start again. Those who are in favour of laying this motion on the table. For those who are against, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's okay. So once again, we are in the in um, in that situation where I have to use uh, my casting vote. Look, uh, I, I've heard from. Uh, I understand your point of um, the point of clarification that you had asked, uh, Mr. Harriet, and uh, I, I, I feel that yes, in the interest of of getting everything um, out there and uh, leaving no stones unturned, uh, let's get the additional information that Councillor Adam uh, and and others are uh, asking for. So, in that sense, I am uh, going to say I'm going to. To favour this motion to to be laid on the table uh, and to be um, to be heard at the next ordinary council meeting. So, in that sense, motion carried. We'll now go to the to our next um, item, which is item ten point seven. Greater Shepparton Heritage Advisory Committee Annual Report 2019. Recommendation is on page 65. Would a councillor like to move a motion, please? Councillor Key, did I see your hand? Sorry. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh I'd like to move the recommendation as a motion that the Council receive and note the Greater Shepherd and Heritage Advisory Committee Annual Report 2019 for the year ended 31st of December 2019. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Sutton. Councillor Sutton, do you want to do you want to say that? that can you unmute okay. yourself? Sorry, sorry, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to move that motion, to second that motion. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So we're basically just receiving and noting their annual report, the 2019 annual report. Um, the committee does provide a critical way of raising awareness of cultural heritage issues, as well as promoting community participation in cultural heritage issues within the municipality. Uh, I think it's really important that we continue to work, you know, really well with the committee and, and really help support also our community members that often have questions in regard to heritage. Um, but it's a, it's a moving beast and I think it's really important, um, other than the report, that we still, you know, watch this space and work really well together. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just like to say this is a very, very hard working um, committee and they are doing a lot for the cultural and heritage if, of Shepparton and surrounds and um, yep it's a great report so happy to read it and happy to um, let everybody see what they've been doing. Thank you very much Councillor Sutton. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? 
Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, we'll now go to the vote. Uh, those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Next is item number 11.1 on page 68, resolving of the Deacon Reserve Advisory Committee. There's a recommendation on page 68. Would any council like to move a motion? Councilor Hazelman. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll move that the Council, one, formally acknowledge the contribution of past and current committee members to the development and successful functioning of Deacon Reserve over many years. Two, formally dissolve the Deacon Reserve Advisory Committee. Three, note that a forum of user groups to provide input will be established in place of the advisory committee. Thank you, Councillor Hazelman. Uh, any seconder? Councillor Patterson? I'll take that, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Councillor Hazelman, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you. I've got somewhat mixed feelings about this because this has been, um, the committee that's been in place there for well over 20 years has been very, very successful in its oversight of the, the capital redevelopment of Deegan Reserve. If those who've been familiar with the reserve think what it was like a bit over 20 years ago and look at the, the developments that have occurred there, whether it's um, you know, improved fencing, the surface itself and lighting and other capital infrastructure. But sadly, um, a couple of years ago, um, some five of the longest serving members of the committee decided that it was time for them to depart, not through any um, particular issues, just that they'd been there long enough. And after two attempts of advertising to um, recruit more community members to the committee, that proved to be unsuccessful. And so um, the, the direction, I'd have to acknowledge the work that um, Tim Zach's done here in, in trying to both preserve the committee and recruit new members to it. That wasn't successful. So the, um, the option moving forward for that oversight role at Deacon Reserve is going to be a, um, a user forum of the, um, the users of the, of the reserve itself. That wouldn't have been my preferred option because in other places where user groups are the management structure, it often develops into um, vested interest, but I'm hopeful that with the work that we'll, we can put in here and some of the participatory work that these people have put in over the years, we'll be able to get a satisfactory group moving forward. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Hesman. Council, Councillor Patterson, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, I certainly would. I knew it'd be competitive here to dig in this because most of us, a lot of us have sat on that committee over a period of years. And it is sad that um, it is uh, is coming to an end, Committee of Management. This is the second Committee of Management I, that I'm aware of that has ceased to exist since I've been a councillor. Um, and this is a sign of the times. Volunteers are so busy and they're hard to find. So, and the volunteers we've had here um, have done a great job. They're very, they have been very possessive and passionate about their job. So, had the Deacon Reserve um, ground at, at the base of their decisions all the time. Uh, it hasn't always been easy with sporting clubs pushing to have current training there when they know it shouldn't be, it should be rested, etc. So it hasn't even been all that easy in the job, but um, they've done a terrific job. And um, I, I don't want to mention names because I know I'll miss a few, but some of those guys have been on that committee for a long time. Um, I'll just be a little bit dangerous here and go, Don Gilgo's been, been there for an enormous amount of time. Um, and having said that, I apologise to someone else that's been there as long or long that I can't recall. Um, but Don has been there a long time since, since, um, since the start, I believe. Um, so, yeah, it is sad that... Um, Let's move on. We've got uh, we've got some good staff, and there is still a users group that will be represented on this to look after it, and maintain it, and, and um, push it along. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Gabe Edison. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion, Councillor Giovanetti? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I'd just like to uh, concur with what uh, Councillor Hazel and Councillor Patterson have said. <clears throat> Having been uh, on that uh, Deacon Reserve Committee for the last four years and had involvement uh, with it since its inception, I'd have to say it's been one of the most uh, successful Section 86 committees that Council has had. 
as Councillor Hazelman has indicated, the amount of work that's been done there to improve the ground is, is fantastic. I also uh, would, would like to thank all of those committee members that have been on it. Uh, I won't name names because uh, there are too many people. Um, I'd also like to congratulate Tim Zach and his staff for their ability to maintain that oval in tip top, tip -top condition. Um, and it's only going to improve now that we've received some funding to uh, have a new uh, netball court installed. So overall, congratulations to everybody who's been associated with, with that uh, Econ Reserve Committee. I think they've done a fantastic job. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Okay, uh, Councillor Adam, do you want to speak to the motion? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I think it's important to note that even though this committee has been dissolved, there'll still be representation by the users, users of the facility with regular meetings and there'll be an avenue for them to uh, funnel their concerns or suggestions back to council via that, those user group meetings. So it's a, in a sense a de facto uh, um, advisory committee, but not, not formally noted as such. Thank you very much, Councillor Adam. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? No, all right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in, those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Next is item number 11.2 on page 71. Award of contract 2029, Equa Moves 25 meter indoor pool tile renewal. There's a recommendation on page 71. Would anyone please move a motion? Councillor Giovanetti. Yes, Madam Mayor, I'd like to move the recommendation that's on page 71 um, that states that the Council accept the tenders by on time developments, proprietary limited, of unit 321 Cook Road, Mitcham, Victoria, for contract number 2029 for the Aquamoves 25 metre indoor pool tile renewal for a lump sum price of $527,670. And we authorise the CEO to sign and seal the contract documents. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, do, do you want to speak to the motion? Yeah, very briefly, Madam Mayor. Uh, look, we've, as councillors, we've seen photos of uh, the uh, issues surrounding the uh, outdoor pool. Uh, it certainly needs the work done to it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And uh, the sooner we can get that done, the sooner the, uh, the kids at Shepparton can start to use that pool, hopefully uh, during our coming summer. Thank you very much, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to add, look, it's, it's a lot of money and uh, I'm sure we've been through the correct process, no doubt. Procurement policy, we've decided that this company uh, stacks up the best, so I wish them luck and... Uh, I hope the job comes out as well as we expect it to come out. Thank you. Thank you. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. Moving on to our next item. It's on page 75, 11.3, award of contract 2011, sealed road stabilization. There's a recommendation on page 75. Would a councillor please move a motion? Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to move the recommendation as a motion on page 75 that the council number one accept the tender submitted by Sabolix Constructions PTY Limited for contract number 2011 for supply and delivery of sealed road stabilisation. Number two, note that the contract term is two years with an option for a two year and one year extension. So that brings it to a two plus two plus one for a total estimated expenditure under the contract over five years of 800, sorry, 8,250,000 8, inclusive of GST. Authorise the Chief Executive Officer to sign and seal the contract documents authorise the Chief Executive Officer to award the optional contract extension periods where satisfactory performance has been demonstrated. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. And a seconder, please. Councillor Summer. 
Happy to second that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It's fairly straightforward. I mean, this contract is for the provision of field road stabilisation works within the Greater Shepparton Municipality, so very important works. Stabilisation works are predominantly used for Council's roads resealing program, major surface treatment program and road maintenance where required. Thank you, Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, roads, rates and rubbish, sort of the workhorse of Council activity often goes unrewarded, but um, it is quite a lot of money, over $8 million in, in this um, recommendation. So um, contrary to popular opinion, we do put quite a lot of effort and resources into maintaining our roads. Um, I think the issue might be the amount of ratepayers per capita per road works out that there's less ratepayers paying for more roads being in a regional area. So it can end up quite a expensive flow on for ratepayers, but this is the sort of thing I think they want us to do and they want us to be seen doing, we should be out there fixing roads. So um, I fully support this. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would any councillor want, uh, want to speak against the motion? Okay, would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Adam? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I support this motion, obviously. I just think it's interesting to note that we've gone from a, uh, a two-panel or two-company uh, panel to a single supplier in this contract, um, <clears throat> which can present a bit of a concern, I think, think potentially. Uh, but there's a recommendation here that a probity officer will be appointed as well to oversee this procurement to minimise any potential concerns around this change. I was a bit concerned about the fact we're putting a probity officer in place because we have concerns about having one supplier. But um, I have faith in the decision makers on that one. But I thought it was worth noting that that was a concern. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, would any councillor like to speak to the motion? Yes, Councillor Patterson. Um, yes, quite impressed the way Councillor Summer explained the, um, the regional road situation because we do pop up a lot of flat. Um, it should be noted the, um, the contract is for two by two, two years by two years option with another extension of one year. So it is over five years at $8 million. So it is a considerable amount of time, but um, yeah, it's a lot of road works to be done. There's no doubt about that. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, a wet winter always brings on a lot more road work, potholes, et cetera. So it's a busy year for roads. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? No? All right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? Okay, the motion, motion carried on a post. Next, we are on page 79, item 12.1, councillor activities 12.1. Uh, 12.1.1, Councillor Activity Report, June 2020. There's a recommendation on page 79. Would any councillor please move a motion? Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to move the motion on um, that the summary of the councillor's community interaction and briefing program be received and record of assemblies of councillors be noted. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. And a seconder, please. Councillor O'Keefe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to second that recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? No, not really. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. We can see our, you know, the list of community interaction has shortened, which is to be expected with the COVID um, environment that we're all living with at the moment. I think it is, you know, definitely worth noting. Many of us sit on some of these committees. I sit on some of these committees and we've been doing our Zoom meeting and contacting with our committee members, contacting with community, because we have a lot of community volunteers that actually sit on some of these committees as well. 
I think it's an important time, you know, to really stop and think about people's mental health and um, interacting with each other is really important. Face to face is always better, as we know, and I think we're all starting to adapt to this new world of Zoom. But, um, you know, I'm really impressed, um, particularly with, you know, a lot of my friends, a lot of the staff through council, you know, everyone that's really trying their best to, you know, really work through this new um, environment. I have family in Melbourne. I have a daughter in Melbourne. You know, it's very difficult, this whole, you know, change that we're living. But what I'm really trying to say is that it's so important that we look out for each other. We continue those conversations, even when we're having our committee meetings, making sure, you know, everyone is okay. I sit on the women's um, charter and it's, you know, it's great to hear that those people are, you know, always looking out for each other. You know, checking in on you know other people that they know. So I, I really encourage everyone, you know, when they're sitting on these committee meetings, to look outside. The, you know what they're doing just to make sure that everyone is coping okay. Working from home can really have its challenges, and um, you know, as I say, hats off to particularly our council and council staff. They're all you know faced with many challenges, but I think you know we're all feeling it tonight when we look at that list, which would normally be more than a page and a half long. It's you know it's decreasing. So the community interaction, you know, is it's difficult, but we can react, we can interact in a different way, and we are. But the main message is make sure that we watch out for each other and make sure that you know mental health is a big issue. People need support; they get it. At the end of each meeting, I always you know remind people, make sure they're okay. If not, there's certainly you know someone to reach out to. So hope everyone's going okay out there. It's a changing world, but um, that, you know we'll all, we'll all get through it. Time will pass, but uh, support is there, and I certainly support you know, support that to happen. Thank you, Councillor Key. Uh, <clears throat> all right, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to uh, speak for the motion? All right, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Okay, motion carried unopposed. Moving on to our next agenda item on page 81, 12.2.1, Mali Darling Association. There's a report um, by Councillor Patterson and there's a recommendation on page 82. So would a councillor like to move a motion? Councillor Giovanetti? Yes, Madam Mayor, I'd like to move the recommendation and that is that council, note Councillor Patterson's report on the Mali Darling Basin Association. Thank you. And do I have a seconder, Councillor Adam? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to second that motion. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? You're on mute, Councillor Giovanetti. Just like to congratulate Councillor Patterson on the work he's put into the report. Very well worded. Um, I think that the work Council Patterson does on behalf of the uh, all of the municipalities in uh, Region Two of the Murray Darling Basin is uh, we should all be thankful for. Uh, we certainly hope that the recommendations coming from um, his report uh, can be acted upon, and that we can uh, at some point uh, um, force forestall that. Uh, 450 gigal gigalitre buyback. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Councillor yes, Summer, yes, you... thank you, Ma'am. Uh, uh, clarification, is this report for noting or for discussion? For noting. For noting. Okay. Still okay, Councillor Adam. Thank you, I'll continue on noting the report. Yes, I'd like to follow on from Councillor Giovanetti's comments. It was a good report um, um, and Councillor Patterson's obviously been fairly actively involved in this for quite a while. I think all councillors understand how important this issue is, along with many others, but this is one of the key issues of our whole region. And I know that Councillor Patterson is pat very passionate about it and he's on top of the situation. And uh, I'd like to applaud his good work and hope, wish him the best continuing on. Uh, expressing our opinions within that within that uh, forum. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Patterson? Oh, yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. I thought, thought it was important to put this up just to show, the, especially our rural ratepayers, the support the council put behind it. Uh, this is very important. It's basically what we've been working towards the last 18 months of these two recommendations. They come from the Region 2 board, which our council um, is uh, 
responsible for and I chair that committee. And it's made up of um, Edwards River Council, um, Berrigan Shire Council, Moira Shire Council and the Federation Council and Greater Shepparton. Um, we had a board meeting come up with these uh, mo two motions we felt were very important and they've since gone back uh, to their own councils and they've gone through a council resolution. Um, and now they've gone to the Murray-Darling Association to be heard at the AGM, which was to be held in Shepparton in October, but will now held virtually online with Shepparton and the host um, council in September. Uh, the first motion quickly deals with the 450 gigs that's on the table for environmental buybacks. Um, the Goulburn, and that's across the whole two basins, Southern and Northern Basin. Um, Goulburn and Murray water is the most reliable water you can get. There's uh, nowhere else in the Murray-Darling Basin that has a con more constant supply of water. Uh, if the 450 gigs is to come out, there's a fair chance it'll come out in this area. So uh, to give you a frightening statistic, the whole GMID, the Goulburn Murray Irrigation District last year, used 500 gigs. Right, so that's supported every factory, SBCA, all our dairies, right now, around through Kerrang, um, up through the Murray, 500 gigs in total, and the potential is to lose 450. So we're putting it up there that um, unless you, there is a, um, a policy that you can defend the, the buyback of water um, without having an environmental impact or a commercial impact on your community, that it can't happen. The second motion deals with the excessive flows from Inner Valley transfers that have gone down the gold in the last few years, and also the Barma Choke. Both of those rivers are, uh, are receiving immense uh, damage, and that is to restrict the flows. The Barma Choke is an easy one to describe because it's gone from 11,500 megs a day capacity to under 10,000, right? And the frightening fact is there the Armand industry will tell you they need 10,000 megs a day to survive. So how in the hell is anyone else going to get this water through the Barma Choke? So it is serious. It's coming to a head. Um, I'm very happy with the motions that have gone up. Um, hopefully we will have some success. And um, whilst a successful motion um, will be great, it um, doesn't mean it'll happen, of course, but um, the Murray-Darling yes. Association has never had a history of putting up motions um, that have an impact on the basis. Councillor Patterson, your three minutes are over. Do you want an extension? Uh, I'm right. Thanks. I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, now, I'll ask you again, would a councillor like to speak to the motion? Yes, Councillor Summer. Well done, Councillor Patterson. This has been talking about this for so long. It's actually gotten through my thick head. Um, I think the assumption is more water equals more environmental driving, which isn't actually true at all. And this, this report is really succinct. It's easy to read. It can Anyone can pick it up and understand what it's saying. Basically, in a nutshell, environmental damage is currently occurring due to high unseasonable water flows. So it's not the case that more water equals more life. It's actually ruining breeding grounds and destroying the banks of the river, which is causing overflow and flooding because the river's um, getting shallower, a whole bunch of issues there, which I never thought about before. And um, the impact on the farmers is devastating, especially with the almonds. So that's definitely a local government issue. And I think you've done a magnificent job in communicating something that's quite simple but come across as usually complex. So congratulations. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would any other councillor like to speak to the motion? Councillor Sutton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just like to say congratulations to Dennis. Well done and keep up the good work. We're behind you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Okay, Councillor, I think we have, uh, everybody has spoken except Councillor Hazelman, <laughs> Does it, do you want to speak to the motion? No, all right. Uh, I would just, uh, again, I would uh, agree with everyone else. Um, thanking, uh, thanks to you, Councillor Patterson, um, your passion and dedication and amazing work that you are doing. And this report has definitely helped us understand this problem in a, in a better way uh, with a simple to understand language. So thank you very much for that work. With that, uh, we'll now go 
to the vote. Um, those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. Thank you. All right, at page number 83, under item number 12.3, notice of motion, uh, we have 12.3.1, notice of motion 3-2020, LGBTI plus advisory committee. Author is Councillor Summer. Councillor Summer, you have given notice that uh, you will want to move uh, this motion to, could you please read out this motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, fairly simple. That the motion, one, prepare a report outlining the policy, financial and resourcing implications of establishing an LGBTI plus advisory committee. And that should read two, not three. Provide the report no later than the August council meeting 2020. Thank you, uh, Councillor Summer. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to support that motion. Second that motion, sorry. And support it. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Councillor Adam, for your second. Um, it's near the end of our term, so I consider this to be just a bit of um, loose ends housekeeping. Uh, we already have had this in the pipeline for a very long time, but it's never been ratified officially at a meeting before. And coming into a new term, I just don't want all the hard work to be thrown, the baby thrown out with the bathwater, so to speak. Uh, I want this to continue so that we can establish a committee. Uh, that we've been in discussion about this since marriage equality, and that was the last term. Now, I know things take time, but I'm hoping this might expedite it a little. Um, we do have full support from the leaders of the pride group i have spoken to them and they're very supportive of this and um that's always a good thing consulting uh it's not a fly by fly by night motion i've put considerable uh, thought into this put motions up before and withdrawn them so this time i'm not withdrawing them i just want this to be officially there as something that we intend to do i've um written academic reports as part of a diploma in primary care nursing on, on the inequalities and the social determinants around the LGBTI community. And I did want to include one of those as point two in my motion, but that was rejected. I'm still unclear about what grounds that was rejected on, but anyway, it would have gone over everyone's head probably. It was nowhere near as good as Councillor Patterson's very clear report. It was, yeah, so oh, it just mentions suicide rates, mental health problems, just the kind of language we use and how that can impact on someone, family structures. Even After the summer, would you like to, um, I'm just looking at the two points and uh, could you sort of elaborate on those points about uh, the committee and, and that the report uh, should be available no later than the August Council meeting. Those two points that are in your notice of motion, do you want to elaborate on those rather than the ones that has not been included? Um, I'm not sure how to proceed with why I'd want to report if I don't discuss the social determinants behind the disadvantage of an LGBTI community. Uh, you can scratch out any mention of an essay if you like, but um, the point still stands, all that's relevant. I mean, I'm just mindful yes. of time. So if you could elaborate more on these two points, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Again, I'm not sure how to elaborate if I can't refer back. To... Okay, I will leave it at that. I think councillors know where I'm coming from and we'll put it to the vote. Thank you. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, uh... This is, has been a long time coming, as Councillor um, Summer uh, alluded to. I think it would have happened anyway, but uh, moving this motion just uh, hurries it up a little bit, I suppose. We're a diverse community in Greater Shepherd, and obviously uh, an LGBT, LGBTI community is, is, a, is a huge part of our community and uh, very valued. So I think this is just a logical step. It probably should have happened earlier, we know that. Um, this way we can have a great conduit into... Uh, their concerns, any issues they may have, I think it's always good to have an engagement with uh, all our community and this just helps us uh, move along in harmony together. So uh, I fully support it. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? 
Would any counselor like, Councillor Pedersen, do you want to speak against or for? Uh, look, I will speak against it, and I'm not against the motion as such. I, I should have done something earlier with the uh, an amendment. I certainly support number one, uh, uh, just a time frame. I think by the time uh, we, we're dealing with volunteers here and we're going to put a restriction of one month on it to get that time frame, I would love someone, or I could have done it myself, or certainly could have done it myself, to uh, move an amendment just to remove that second part of it, put the time frame on it. Um, which so are you proposing an amendment? Yeah. Or you are just making a comment? I'm just making a comment now. Okay, all right. So okay. That's my, that's my concern, there's a time limit on it. And, uh, I, I just think we're putting pressure on people when um, we don't need to, both of the community and ourselves and the council officers. Okay. Councillor Adam, do you have any point of clarification or? Just yes. a point of clarification, thank yeah. you, Madam Mayor. Point of clarification, I mean, this motion is preparing a report, not actually forming the, the actual advisory committee. So I would have thought a month's too long to have, prepare financial and resourcing implications, seeing as we've got a, a numerous advisory committees and I would think there's a template out there and this is just a matter of inserting the different people's names and the different uh, resources potentially. But I don't think it's a great time consuming, uh, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking it's a, a bit of a template that you just add different um, ingredients to basically. That's just my thoughts, but anyway. Thank you. Okay. All right, okay, so this was point of clarification. I guess point of clarification, uh, according to the procedures can, should wait until the end of this debate, but um, I accept it on this point, at, at this point in time, on this occasion. All right, I'll go back to our normal uh, proceedings now. Anyone who wants to speak for the motion? Councillor O'Keefe? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to um, point out that, yeah, an advisory committee is very, very important, you know, for council to have the uh, information we need to run this type of um, united you know, local community invested um, engagement. So uh, well done, Council Summer, for putting it up. I have a lot to do with GB Pride and a lot of the members there have been very involved over the last few years and very, very proud of the work that is done. So I think a, an advisory committee that we can do things better within our community and Council being involved in that um, is a very positive step. So it's definitely supported. Thank you, Councillor Keith. Would any Councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor Sutton? Madam Mayor, just saying, just like to say thank you to Fern for bringing it up. You've done really well. I know you've been talking about it for a long, long time. So it's good to see the motion finally here so we can now vote on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sutton. Uh, would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Okay. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? To the motion, Councillor Hesseman. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fully of supporting of the, um, the work that's going to be done here, but we need to be specific what it is doing. It's going to outline the policy, financial and resource implications of establishing this committee. It doesn't say we're going to establish that committee, which I certainly hope we do. That's another discussion for another time. So I'm not too sure what's actually being achieved here. I would have thought that the CEO uh, and his staff could produce that policy, financial and resourcing implications in about five minutes flat. Um, there's nothing involved. Um, so to a certain extent, this is, this is largely symbolic. The real work that needs to go on, and as I understand is going on between council staff and GB Pride, is looking at the, the ramifications and the serious components of establishing a committee issues around the terms of reference and membership. They're the serious stuff that the council is going to need to address, not the bit of, as I said, the symbolism of this. It's fantastic. It's moving in the right direction, but let's not get too carried away with what this is achieving. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Hazelman. Uh, with that, I think we have covered everyone. Um, so we have... Uh, Councillor Patterson spoke against, so that means I'll give a right of reply to Councillor Summer. 
Thank you very much, Madam Mayor, and thank you to the people who supported this. I, it, it is a bit of fluff, really. And um, the thing is, ironically, I was following, at the time, proposed governance laws that said councillors need to have a report outlining um, the policy, financial and resourcing requirements before actually moving a motion on something. So this was preliminary, and I'm glad there's work being done in the background. But as far as I could interpret those governance rules, that's ex this is this is what we're limited to. We have to do this before we can get any further. So I believe that we're still in discussions about whether that was required or not. And it may have even been taken out prior to the draft being released, which I hope it has. So all of you had great points. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just um, going to take it to the boat before I say something wrong and it may, it may not get through. So <laughs> thank you. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll now go to the vote. Uh, those in favor? Those against? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Next on page 84, item 13, we have documents for signing and sealing, item 13.1. Uh, the Great Shepherd and Council and Museum of Vehicle Evolution Move Department Funding Auspice Agreement. There's a recommendation on page 84. Would any councillor please move a motion? Councillor Giovinetti. Yes, Madam Mayor, thanks very much. Um, I'd like to move the recommendation on page 84, <clears throat> which states that the Council authorises the CEO to sign and seal the Great Shepherd and Council and Museum of Vehicle Evolution. Uh, and Department of Funding Agreement. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Summer? Very happy to second that motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Giovanetti, would you like to speak to the motion? You're on mute. Madam Mayor. Um, look, I'll only be brief. Um, but it's great that uh, the state government has contributed another $900,000 to this uh, particular project, which we know will be a significant uh, tourist attraction here in Shepparton. The purpose of this motion is to allow the state government to give us the money to give to the MOVE organisation. We're only auspicing that 900000 In other words, we just uh, take it in one hand and hand it over with the other. Thank you, Councillor Giovanetti. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? I think it's going to be fantastic for the region and I can't wait to take my kids. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Would any councillor like to speak against the motion? Would any councillor like to speak for the motion? Councillor uh, O'Keefe? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just, just want to add that it's very exciting to see this you know, coming to the fruition that it is. You know, I remember the very early conversations and the reality that, you know, how can we make this happen? So I'd just um, yeah, like to acknowledge you know, all the team involved behind MOVE and, and their vision and the community behind it as well. It's going to have a lot of history telling there. We have some incredible stories to be told within our trucks and our transport. So, yeah, I think it's an exciting, you know, national, you know, event that's going to happen here eventually of opening this fantastic, you know, museum. So well done to all involved and really looking forward to seeing, you know, what we can do with this economically for our community when we can. I know it's going to be a massive attraction and something we're all going to be very, very proud of, you know, once it is opened and up and running. So, yeah, well done. Thank you, Councillor Okey. Would any councillor like to speak to the motion? No, all right, so we'll now go to the vote. Those in favor? Motion carried unopposed. We'll now move on to our to page 85. Next item, urgent number 14, urgent business, not included on the agenda. Yes, Councillor Keith. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I wish to please bring up the free off-street park if you, in the initiative that we rolled out on the 13th of July. I wish to acknowledge that there is confusion around the Fraser Street car park, whether it being an on-street or an off-street car park, which was brought to my attention on Monday and has caused stress and confusion amongst the business community, which needs to be addressed immediately. The Chamber of Commerce, some members of the parking reference group and some councillors also considered the Fraser Street car park an off-street car park. 
as per the information was on our website up until recently, which has been acknowledged as a mistake. But, you know, me myself, I actually was under the impression that it wasn't off street car park. So I ask the report be prepared for this car park to be included in the free parking initiative and brought back to councils at the August council meeting. So uh, just to uh, clearly understand, uh, Councillor O'Keefe, your urgent business matter is to prepare a report and bring it back to council meeting regarding Fraser Street uh, car park. You're on mute. To, to be included. Did, I, did I understand it right? Yes, to be included as a free car park. A report or a decision on, I just want to clarify, did you, you mention report, do you want to Bring, do you want council to bring a report on this Fraser Street to be included as a, as a free car park? We are going to need a report because we are going to need some of the cost implications and we're going to need a little bit more information. So just a report on bringing it to council laws to include it in the free parking. Chris. Yes. Councillor Hazelman, yes, you... Yes, Madam Mayor, I hate to be the process policeman yet again, but there really needs to be two motions here. The first, I think Councillor O'Keefe is arguing in support of what would be a substantive motion. The first motion needs to be that the council considers the item as urgent business. Once we agree to that, then the second motion would be the substantive motion that we'll all talk to. So, Thank you for clarifying Council, uh, yeah. Councillor Hazelman. And that's what I was uh, trying to seek from Councillor O'Keefe. We go a step back. Um, so your um, urgent business is about <coughs> Um, a matter that, uh, so the two conditions for urgent business matter include number one, that the matter relates to or it arises out of a matter which has arisen since distribution of the agenda and it cannot save, and the second condition is that it cannot safely or conveniently be deferred until the next ordinary meeting. So it, if the matter is that, um, that is the matter is about Fraser Street car park not being included in the in the off-street car park. Uh, what I would like to clarify and say is that it is a matter that is that did not arise uh, since the printing, printing of July Ordinary Council meeting agenda. The matter that Fraser Street car park is not included in council owned off-street car park uh, in the CBD is based on council's decision that was uh, taken in the April Ordinary Council meeting. And uh, not being aware of this until after the printing of this agenda does not change the, the council report or the, or the um, information on the basis of which this decision in April council meeting was made. Uh, therefore, I, uh, and, and the matter, um, it is a matter, it's a different matter that uh, which Councillor Hazelman has pointed out. And uh, so I believe that this matter is not important this matter about not being aware of this is not the off-street car park. Um, it is a separate matter altogether, which is asking for basically making Fraser Street car parks free and time. So on the basis of strictly going uh, by the basis of, by the two criterion for urgent business matter, I believe this matter is not urgent. And, uh, but this is only the matter about your uh, not being aware of this decision. And as Councillor Hazelman has rightly pointed out, a separate matter is a bigger matter which can be discussed and which can be, um, uh, you know, which can be taken to the uh, next ordinary council meeting. But purely on the basis of uh, not being aware of this decision, I believe this is not urgent business matter. That's how I would understand. But you have just got to adjudicate the urgent business matter, uh, Madam Mayor, yeah. under uh, thirty one one and thirty one two. And that's it. Uh, I mean, if you agree to accept it, it then follows that Council Hazelman's point that uh, you need the councillors to support that as well. But the initial point is for you to make the uh, adjudication. So the adjudication around whether it is an urgent business matter about not being aware and that's how, that's, that, that is not an urgent matter. Yes, Councillor O'Keefe. Okay. Uh, could I just have a point of clarification? I do think it's an urgent matter because there's confusion amongst the community and I think we need to clarify what that confusion is and how it's come about. 
and not only councillors, the reference group, the chamber, they were all, many of them were under the impression this was an off street car park. So, all right, perhaps we'll just look at it, putting it up as a separate oh, so Keith, There are two matters, and that's why I'm trying to clarify two matters. The matter that you were not aware, I'm focusing on that, and that's what I have understood, that you were not aware that decision was made. Um, that matter is not urgent because it, it does not arise, it did not arise after the agenda was printed. It was there from the day one. That's the understanding. Councillor well, Hazelman, would you like to add to this one? If I have, uh, you're on mute. Yes, I am. If, if I can, I think we're we're arguing over nothing because the substantive notion, as I understood from Councillor O'Keefe, was to seek a report at the August meeting. So whether it's urgent business or not, that report's going to get produced. I'd imagine. I think the CEO's got the got the gist of what's going on and would. Um, react accordingly yeah that's that's true so that matter is different and it is being it is under process it is um so on the basis of that um i would just stick to this that this particular one is not urgent business matter and doesn't need it does not need a discussion under urgent business matter yes councillor sam um i'm so sorry but i'd have to dissent from the ruling of the chair on this one. I think if you're not aware of something and it comes to your attention after the fact that indeed it's probably even more urgent in terms of trying to sort it out quickly. So absolutely urgent business and, and I find that astonishing as a reason not to accept it. Okay, point taken, but uh, because it's the it's the chair's role to decide to, to get further, to, to move further, to move further on this one. I'm saying that this, uh, this is not an urgent business matter. However, the matter around, um, so this is not an yeah, urgent business matter, cool but it, yeah. However, yeah. the matter regarding this Fraser Street, whether it's in, whether it should be made a free or not, it's a separate matter, which is being progressed, which is being discussed uh, as we all know, and it can be discussed in our next meeting. So with that, I would like to close this matter and move on to item number 15, which is confidential management reports. Item 15.1, designation of confidentiality of information report attachments. There's a recommendation on page 85. Would any council please like to move a motion? Councilor Sutton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the motion on page 85. Do you want me to read it out? If you like. In accordance with section with in, in accordance with section 77-2B of the Local Government Act 1989, the Council designates as confidential all documents used to prepare the following agenda items, previously designated, designated by the Chief Executive Officer in writing as confidential under section 77.2c of the Act. Report 11.2, Aquamoves 25 metre indoor pool tile renewal. This report relates to a contractual matter, which is a relevant ground for applying under section 89.2d of the Act. Report 11.3, award of contract 2011, sealed road stabilisation. This report relates to a contractual matter, which is a relevant ground applying under section 89.2D of the Act. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Giovanetti. I'm happy to second that motion, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Councillor um, Sutton, would you like to speak to the motion? You're on mute. No, thank you. Okay, and Councillor Giovanetti? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Um, and do, would any Councillor like to speak against the motion? No, okay. Would any Councillor like to speak for the motion? Okay, we'll now go to the vote. Those in favour? The motion carried unopposed. Thank you. With now, we'll close this meeting. Um, 
and I declare the meeting close at uh, 7.33 p.m. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, and stay safe.